this um, this um, a window that says right now it says sample team. Now you can add teams, and if you wanted to add a team, you can go to add team, and let's call it a class. And click OK. Now I don't have any members because I haven't added any members. You can, if you have a um, text file, now let me just quickly over here on my other computer. Um, I'm going to open up and I'm going to, this is Notepad, and you're going to have to get the names of the people somehow. So they're probably going to be emailed to you or in a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or whatever. So let's just do Okay, so there's the all the team, and all you have to do is copy these names, and then you can go to quick names down here, and right click and paste, and it pastes those names in just like I had typed them. Click OK, and you'll see them here, and I want to put all of these over on the team name list, so I just push this button right here and all of them are here. Now this is because I just have one name, the name two, name three is not highlighted. And if I go back in here and edit, let's edit mine and put my last name okay this will it notice it's still under name one there it, it doesn't go to name two in order to do that you have to add them individually okay so i've got this i'm going to click ok and i'm going to click on the screen now you'll notice that it comes in in outline form there's no stitches in it because it you have to for any team name object you have to generate the stitches and to do that you need to go to the word stitch at the top and down to generate stitches and that puts the stitches in there okay now you'll notice you've got the list of names here so you can select one of them and you can see, you can go into reshape, change the um, spacing if you need to of an individual name. But if you don't have the team name advanced and you want this to be on two different lines, what you have to do is you've got to go into the properties and you have to put your... Um, cursor in front of the name and you're going to backspace to get that space out of there and then hit enter to get that on the next line and you're going to update text. So now that, and you'll notice it says Clark Collins all weird, that is, you're going to have to do that for each individual name. So if I had Teresa's last name, let's just do Teresa's last name, I can actually type like that and then I would have to now I'm, I'm not going to take the space out this time I'm going to see tell you show you why you need to take that space out I'm going to hit enter to get it on the next line and I'm going to update the text well notice the Pierre is not centered under the Teresa it should stop right here because there's a space so I'm going to grab this backspace get that space out of there and update text now it's over there so that's, you would have to do that for each individual name. 
if you wanted multiple names okay you can go to this one that selects all the team names so all of them are selected I'm going to go back to the manage team names which is this and I'm going to click on that and I see my the thing here I'm going to change the team though so actually I'm going to select all these and delete and start new so I'm going to click on the manage team names again and I'm going to use that sample team I'm going to put them all over here and the name order you can have name one name two name three um, or name four because there's actually four pl places in this one so let's just add another one and then click OK and you can see that it's added all of those so let's say we want to add all those so I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to click on the screen and remember it's in the outline mode I must generate the stitches so I'm going to go to stitch generate stitches And now I have this, the, all this, the words up there. So I, I don't want to see, I just want to see certain ones. So let's say we need to make the name of where they live a different font. So I can click on the column here, the name three column, and it will choose all of those things I can change it to color down here and it will change all of them now notice this one's not looking too good because it is a fixed line baseline and if I go to settings it's the spacing is chosen it needs to be spacing and width if I click OK you can actually read it now and now I can go in to apply to all and I have to generate it again and now you'll be able to see all the words so I've applied that to all of them that one piece I can also change the size of the words so let's change the size of this one from 0.394 to let's just make it 0.5 and now if you look at individually you can see that it's made all of them I can also change the font so let's say I don't want this as block 2 I want it to be Adele and it changes and it keeps the changes so you don't have to worry so now I've got got it the way I want it for some reason that's the way I want it I can go to file save as and I want to save it as an EMB in case I need to come back and change the um, names of something or they don't like the red they wanted it green or or something so I have the original EMB so I've got that now I'm going to go to file export machine file and I'm going to choose any machine format I'm just going to choose Bearden for this one and notice when I do this the option button is lit up so I'm going to click on the options and now this little box pops up and this is the most important thing of the team names okay if I was to leave it like this right now it would not do any of the team names and I have a lot of people that this happens to they just automatically save it go boom done and then they call and say I'm not getting any names that's because you chose the design part only well you didn't choose it it's what's the default and you didn't change it so the design part only we'll get to in a minute okay this one is only team names so you want to start it or you want to choose this one team name only with stops and then when you click OK and hit save 
it will come up and say it will actually tell you how it saved it okay so it's on the desktop okay well you don't have to put it on the desktop you can put it wherever you want so that's um, just team names okay so now let's start a new thing and I'm going to open this design and I'm going to, I don't like these so we're just going to get rid of this and I don't like this was a customer's don't know why I can't get rid of that but there it goes okay so now I've got that and I want to put names underneath this okay so I'm gonna to go to manage team names and I'm going to put all of these in there but I just need name one and name two so I'm going to click on that one and just do these click OK and then click OK here and place it on the screen remember generate stitches and you can move it up let's move it up just a little bit here like that okay and I want it to be yellow now I need to see if everything's fitting looks good to me okay so everything's good um, this is the design that I want uh, that that's the way they want it um, in order to make sure that this is centered though what you need to do is this design portion of it is not grouped so I'm going to group this and then I'm going to select all of this and select all of this and I'm going to go and make sure that it is centered there now it's centered all the the words or the names will be centered underneath this again I'm going to save it as an EMB so I can work if I need to come back to it and um, and change anything so now I'm going to go to file export machine file again I'll leave it here you're going to go to options notice it it remembers the last one I chose so let me cancel because I need to move this okay click on options now team names only with stops if I chose that one it would only do this it wouldn't do any of the design okay so you have two different ways well three different ways actually to do this if you have multi-head machines and you want to do this on your multi-head machine you need to either choose design plus team names with stops so what that's going to do is it's going to sew the design on all the heads then it will automatically stop and you turn all of the heads off except one hit go and it does the first name then you turn the that head off hit turn the next one on and does the next name that's one way to do it with the multi heads the other way that you can do it with the multi heads is you can choose design part only and it will save the design in the position that it is and place it and it will sew on all of your heads for your multi head then you will save team names only with stops and if you have the same hoops you can put it on your single head and just do the names that to me is faster and more efficient if you don't have a multi head machine you just have a single head you want to choose this one that is called repeated design and team names with stops so what it's going to do it's going to make one file for you and it's going to do the design and the first name and then it'll stop you'll take that one off put the next one on hit go it'll do the design again and the next name take that one off put the next one on hit go and it 
and so forth. The only problem with this, though, is you have to know how many stitches your machine can accept at one time. Because I had a customer call, and she was doing this, and she had saved it, repeated design and team names, and when she called me back, she said the machine won't read it. It's telling me, it's giving me an error message. And I said, well, how many stitches are in it? And she said, I said, how many stitches are in the design? And she said, 5,000. I said, how many names do you have? She said, 100. I said, that's over a 500,000 stitch. No, it's only 5,000. No, it's not. Because if you were to save this as an, a DST or a Bearden file or whatever, a machine file, and reopen that file, it's done that design that many times. So it would so this is one color, then this. Then this is one color, then this. So it has a huge amount of stitches. So what she had to do is break it down into, I think she got it down to like 15 names at a time and um, broke it that way because her machine would accept it that low amount of stitches. Wouldn't accept all hundred of them though. So, and you can also do create multiple output files and that will actually create how many of her names you have. It will create that many output files and it actually names them what's here, the name. It'll, it'll say SOG um, like this one's Mark Robinson. So it would actually put the name in there so you know exactly what is going to sew. Now, let's go cancel because I don't want to save that. I do want to show you that in print preview, you do have the capability. Let me go to options. Of turning on the team members and this only lights up and it's only there if you've used a team name it's the only time you'll see it so you're going to click okay and you'll notice that it actually shows you which names come in first which name second which names third and so forth it will do that for you so you can print it out and if like I said if you have if you choose that repeated design and team names, what I usually tell my, my customers is the way that I would do it is I would separate it by sizes if it's going on a shirt or something and make all the ones and name it like this one would be SOG large. And that way I don't have to worry, okay, is John Smith getting a large or an extra large? I don't have to worry about that. And I would save it as the size of the shirt so I could just, you know, very speedily put them on there. So that is the, ba whoop, the basic team name function with no, um, with no, well, you also get, hold on, I forgot to show you this. Let's say we wanted to make this a patch. So let's do a very quick, um, I want to, that's where I'm going to trim. Whoops. Okay. So, ooh, that's not centered, but that's okay. Um, that's the patch. I just need to make it so first. Okay. So now that is sewing. Whoops. And let's say we want to do this. On, we have a huge hoop or you have one of your, um, um, I'll think of the name of it, the, the one that you don't actually hoop. It's like the big one that you just put the, it's a whole, it's the width of your table of your machine. Um, border sash, border frame. Um, so what you can do is you can go to, team name matrix and when you click on that it asks you how large is the hoop you're doing and how wide is the hoop you're doing this is telling me that I have five team names I'll have five rows and one column well to, to show you what this does I'm actually going to make this to be let's for fun do 30 inches and you can see 
it's still doing one column because it's going down. Okay, so let's just take it back to 20. And now, notice what happened. It did, I hadn't selected anything else. So turn that off. I'm going to grab everything and hit the team name matrix. And notice I have two output files. I have one row and four columns. Well, let's make this 20. Now, I've, now I have one output file with four rows and two columns. When I click OK, it gives me this. So if you had all of them, you could make this. And notice it does it and puts each person's name individually. It doesn't do all of them at over the top of each other. It makes the matrix for you if you would prefer to do it this way. So now you could sew that out at one one pass and then um, cut the run stitch here and then make quote unquote patches or badges for it. Okay, hold on. Rhonda has a question. I am embroidering 150 shirt with names. Each name gets embroidered on five of the shirts. Would I be able to use team names for that, or does it send each name one after the other? That's a yes and a no. Well, yes and a yes, actually. Okay? <laughs> what you would do, um, Rhonda, on that, or what I would do, to make your life easier, <laughs> when you go into, and let me just turn this off, and here we have this. Let's go into the Manage Teams. What you're going to do is you're going to add the sample team, just like you would with a brand new design, and you're going to add the names, and I would add John Smith five times. So it's going to sew John Smith five times for you. You don't have to worry about, oh, do I have it done two, have it done three? You could put five names in there, and it will do five John Smiths, five, you know, whatever. So you could actually do this. And click OK. Click on the screen and generate the stitches. And you have five John Smiths, five Jack Joneses, and five so forth. So that would be um, what the way I would do it. <laughs> um, so, and to answer Naomi's question, the sizes, I had previously put that in the order form on another thing I did, and that's why the sizes came up. <laughs> there wouldn't be sizes if you didn't have that. Like if I go into the print preview now and look at the team names, um, team members, there we go, click OK. Next page. See, whoa, there it is. Huh. I'll have to look into that, Naomi, because I'm not real sure about that. Let me see if it's in the... I haven't seen that, so let me go in and actually see if it is in... Oh, it's in here. It was in the... the... That's why it's in there. If I had taken those out, I didn't even know they were in there. So there was actually five places for information in there, and that's what that's what it did. Okay, so now that is the regular team names.
any questions on regular team names. If you're going to do this a lot and you, I mean, this is going to be an everyday thing that you do, I would definitely get the team names advanced. And it is available for decorating as well as designing. So you can get, it doesn't matter which one of those you have, you can get the team names advanced. Because what you can do, remember I said designs? Well, let's say that we want, let's say we want this that design that I used before. Okay, so here we go. We're going to grab this. And I'm going to take that away. And I'm going to make it red. Okay. Now, my customer wants the name up here arched over this and the last name arched over this. So I'm going to do a lettering object. And I'm going to do, I'm purposely going to type this name one. And I'm going to set the font as Adele. That was pretty. And let me see. Ooh, I need an arc clockwise. And I, let's go here. Let's put it from here to here and up like that. A mm, little too large, so let's change the size to about 0.50. Oh, much better. Okay. I like the color. That's good. And now I need the bottom. But they want the bottom, the last name, um, a different color. Okay, so I'm going to do another lettering object. And I'm going to call this one name 2. And I want it to be the same size. So we're going to go from here to here. Oop, I chose the wrong clockwise. I needed counterclockwise. Oh, let me try that again. Okay. That's that's okay, and we want it yellow. Okay, so that is what my customer wants. That's their logo, and that's the way they want. That's the font they want. That's the colors, the name, I mean, the, the size and everything. So what you can do is you can select the whole design, and you go up to File, Save as Team Name Template. Now, I'm going to Team Name Designs Custom. I'm going to call this one, let's just call it SOG because that's the name of the company. I'm going to click Save. And now, let me, I'll show you what we can do. We can go to Designs now. You'll notice there it is. All I have to do is click on it, and it puts it on the screen. There it is. Generate stitches because got to do that. Okay, colors the same. Now I can go to the team name list, go into manage, and um, let's just add the the class name. Well, no, let's that's fine. And go over here and do name one, name two. And this is name two. Okay, so click OK. And click OK. It changes all of them. Got to generate them. And that easily, whoops, what happened to that one? Hold on. Oh, name one. Uh, John Smith. Okay, I don't need this one. So I need to put him back over here. Okay, now 
There we go. Much better. So it's going exactly, and it will retain the baseline. It will retain the the font. It will retain the size. It will retain the um, color, as you see here. So it makes your life so much easier if, um, and like I said, you'll see them in the designs. Like, um, let me close this. And let's say we want to do this one. Okay, so I'm going to click on this one, and it pops up. And you can't see here, okay, but there's a, a name right here, okay. So if I go into Manage Team Names and push them all over there, I don't want this one. Click OK. I do have to generate as usual and you can see that it is placed and see how that one's a script font totally different and then you can see that it is placed it exactly where it should be and it easily see you know what design you need um, and it it makes your life a whole lot easier and even if you just need two names like a one at the top and one at the bottom um, you can actually let's see let's try this no wait a minute I need to click off of that Okay, let me close this one. Select all and close this one. Whoop. Okay, now I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to try something, and I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. Um, let's do this. Oh, see, I'm on the same one, so let's stop and... So there's there, there is a method the reason I'm wondering about this so let me just look here No, it won't. It's still just going to do <clears throat> the the same name on the, the same line, or the n name on the same lines. You cannot get it to go down because, like, in if I had chosen one of these designs, like this one, you'll see if I go back into the Manage and Name Order, we have Baseline 1, Baseline 2, and Baseline 3. So it's not going to, um, and I don't want this one, so I'll delete this one, but I'm going to put all of this one over and click OK. And this one I'm going to delete. Wait a minute. OK, now I'm going to select all and generate stitches. And I can see each individual one <coughs> quite easily. So again, like this one has two different baselines. So there's an arc and a straight. So it makes it easier for you all to do um, to do that. Again, you can export. Um, you create now this right here. If you hit create designs. This is wild. If you hit this button, it's going to make that as a separate design. So it's called Design 1, Jack Jones, Atlanta. Okay? If I had selected all of the team names 
and hit create names or create designs it would make one for each individual name and it also if I had saved this to be whatever company it is or you know whatever name you want it to be it would be blah blah and then the name of the person that's there so you can actually create it very simple and if you wanted to take each name to your machine differently and by itself so it will create all of those names now I don't need all of them so I'm going to close them okay so what questions do we have for me yes Rhonda we were looking at advanced team names well not not in the create designs the um, regular team names will do that standard team names In the quick name add, team names was an additional element. Team names element, it wasn't an additional element in three. It, you got the standard team names, but you just needed, if you needed the team names advanced to make the templates, that was what the element was. If, if you have the advanced team names in E3, you will have it in E4. To make the template is only in advanced? Yes, that's correct, Sandra. That you can only make the, uh, the templates in the advanced program or the advanced team names. And this, this is totally new to version 4, the designs. You did not have this before. You had to go into the naming order in your team names advanced if you had it um, and choose the one. This is great because you can see the actual design and you don't have to worry about placing it. Any, I mean, like this one's really cool. Let me just go out of here and add a new one and then go to this one. So we got it there. We're going to go back over to team list to manage team names. Shoot them over there. Shoot that one over there because I don't want it. Generate stitches. And there we go. I thought those were golf clubs. Evidently they're not. Well, that doesn't look like a golf club to me. Any other questions? I am recording this class, so it will be available probably tomorrow sometime. It takes a while to convert them um, once I get finished. Sandra, I just selected it, and di uh, that was a DST file that somebody sent me, That this one right here, that one. It was a DST file, and it was a... a, a I just selected the stitch and deleted it. <laughs> Rhonda, a lot of people tell me that. I, when I'm in class, they say, why didn't you show me that last week? Um, this is a function that not everybody knows that's there and the power of it. Like I said, if you're, if you only have a single head though, the major thing that you've got to worry about is the design plus the team names, how many stitches it is. So your machine, like the girl, she, it, it, it errored out. It wouldn't take the design because it was too many stitches. 
So you've got to break it down into manageable stitch count for your machine. Do, did you have a handout? Um, I th I've got a handout, but it's for E3. I don't have the E4 one ready yet. I can add it. Hold on just a minute. Let me go view. Let me go grab it for you. Here's the one for just the regular team names. That's the one that I've got for the E3. I'll have everybody's um, email address that attended the class so I can actually um, email you the file. I should have it done here pretty soon. I've got the basic one done, but I don't have the advanced one done. Here, let me, uh, hold on just a minute while we've got time, so let me open the one that I have. Uh, let me, okay, hold on. Mm. Okay, let me find it here real fast. Um, let me find team names. I gotta find what page it's on. Hold on, team names is on 67 and 103. Okay, hold on a minute. Let me look at 103. I'll have to send it to you. I can't. I can't find it right now. So, let me send it to you, and um, I will. Um, like I said, I have everybody's email address, and I can send you the E4 when when um, when I find it. Well, that's it for today. I hope everybody um, enjoyed the class.